Hello everybody. A long time no see. I've been off for like three, four days, haven't I? Um, so we, uh, Tuesday, uh, we had, uh, one of our pack put to sleep, unfortunately. Uh, Jensen, he got uh, glaucoma that came on really, really rapidly in one eye. Um, really swollen. It's like a, a inflammation of the optic nerve and puts pressure on the eyeball. Nothing that can be done. He was too old to have an operation to have the eye removed. So, yeah, that was very sad. And then went to sleep Tuesday night, woke up on Wednesday with like um bloodshot eye of my own. And it's now Saturday morning. So, yeah, you've not seen me for a little while. But today we'll make up for it. So I'm 15.10 in Rapido. Rapido. That's, that's a... Takes you back to uh, nine, 1990? Anyone in the UK? Something like. Anyway. So yeah, fifteen ten. I've been playing. I've been playing a load of ten minute chess recently, um, and I'm fifteen fifty, fifteen sixty in Blitz, which is like unheard of for me to be in front of my rapid rating in Blitz. So go figure. Maybe it's something to do with embracing the uh, the Gambit Man lifestyle. Okay, so we know what we're doing here. There's there's many interesting ways that they can continue, and we have an Italian. Let's go with the Russo, and I have a pint of hot salted water. Yum! It's like drinking blood. Because I realise, you know, I've been making videos for you guys now for about three years, but the majority of those videos I've actually recorded while high on caffeine, if not caffeine and sugar. So what I'm doing now is, this is what, day 13? Now into my 90-day uh, kind of OXL challenge, eating nothing but uh, meat and drinking water. Um, my sleep is immeasurably better, although I am waking up early. I'm waking up around four or five in the morning, but I'm wanting to go to bed at eight or nine and no screens, no screens are, you know, after, when I go to bed. Um, sometimes I have my phone in the room for my alarm to go off in the morning, but, um, yeah, that, that makes a huge difference. I literally just put my head down and shut my eyes now. It's crazy. Okay. Prick. Is having a it's his name. What can I? What can I do? Is having a uh, a think. Okay, the best move here for white is pawn to d4. But I guess you'll rarely find that at this level. More common are takes, pawn d3. Knight out here is is okay, but knight. Knight c3 falls into the problem of takes. If knight takes, you then get uh, pieces forked. And sometimes you, you get the same situation where you take with a knight, knight takes back, you fork. Oh, he's done it. He's found it. Hmm. Okay. So, game on. Prick is up for it. It's probably a red pill, blue pill joke in there somewhere. I can't figure it out. I'll leave it to you. Answers on a postcard. Took two minutes over that move. Okay, now, the general rule is, I think, that when the bishop has come out, that you take the pawn next to the bishop. I think I figured that out once. This is a slightly different situation. Now, this pawn appears to be free, but then there are two attackers on here, but then there's two defenders. So I should probably take the free pawn. That could then allow this, although there's no queen on d8 and no knight out yet. 
So I'm wondering if I should play there. Knight takes, 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 takes. I'm going to play my knight out. I'm just, I'm just going to prioritize development here. I don't. I really don't mind if he wants to take here. If he wants to take here, I'll take once. And if he trades, I'll take twice. And I've still got the the this pawn as a shield against rook e1. Now this is a 15 plus 10, so there is a an increment. Therefore, you can't rely on bullying your opponent with the clock. Now, if he takes here, I do have pawn d5. Okay, yes. Huh. Now, this is now fried liver territory, isn't it? So, in... There. Bishop takes, I can take. There, if pawn takes, I have knight, knight a5, right? But, likewise, if I take here, knight here, I just move the rook, because the queen's off d8, that's the point. So the attack has lost something of its sparkle. Let's say h6, he comes in, I move the rook. Um, if d5, ed, takes doesn't work, because I lose, I lose a piece. So I think I can actually just not flinch. I'm going to play h6. If he comes in with the bish, so be it. I move the king. Bishop then may retreat and then with ideas of bringing the knight in second with a fork. I do have knight d8 that... Okay. That He's got this. So I'm thinking rook h7. Now I'm kind of interested in this because this is going to be, you know, if I continue playing the Russo, this is a challenging line. Okay, crikey. Okay, I have knight takes, that's all right. Okay, equal material. My king has not moved. I have d6, bishop b6, castles. I'm thinking I should probably take that pawn. Because otherwise this loses the game. Yeah, even like you know, bishop d6 is tempting, but then the rook pins the queen and it's game over. Right, okay, interesting times. Okay, you hassle my queen, do you? Can't go there, 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 there. Or anywhere on there. I could go here. We might trade queens. Or I might go here, but that's in the bishop's way. Here is not great. I mean, there is a check with the discovery on the queen, but the queen is defended by the knight. Thinking that looks like quite appealing. So it's 3-3 three, three pawns against 2-4. Oh! Cock. That is also a skewer, because the rook behind it is undefended. <sighs> this might just invite the other bishop out into, the, into play as well. I'm going to resign that, and I'm going to figure out what I did wrong. I'm feeling my opponent played perfectly. No, he didn't. He made two mistakes. Let's have a look. Okay. 
Best move is to take that. And we're still a pawn down. Okay, he says I should have just took the pawn. But I'm still worse. Another hanging pawn. That, yeah, would have got the knight out of the attack. That's true. And here, actually, I'm fine. Okay. So, the point is, this, this queen e7 line is not terribly bad. If I pull up the um, Leeches Explorer, we'll have a look at this. Quickly. Uh, okay. So, we've got it set to 1800-2000, which is fine. Italian, Russo, d4, best. Now, look, Queen e7 here scores 57% for black. It's like the eighth, seventh, eighth most common move and does do better for black. I don't do particularly well in it, and, and the computer doesn't like it like we see. But um, I think the point is, and all these most popular moves, like top seven moves here for white, black now does better. But I did not. That's just because I didn't do very well. Okay, so let's go back. Let's do another 1510. Um, and I'm down to 1500. Okay, now we've got a 1500 rated opponent. And we've got the bishop's opening, so I'll play the Calabrese. This is a challenging line when they trade immediately. It's not the most intuitive of moves, really, for white. You know, I've just developed a piece, and then I'm just going to rub it out. Queen h5 check right now doesn't work because of g6. And already my uh, bishop's opening playing opponent, this, this one does not have a rude name, this is Ran, Rajan SP. Ah! Okay, the Yanish variation. Mr. Yanish uh, likes his f board moves, eh? Alright, now. So he's not taken the pawn, he's not gone for that. Um, I think I should develop my king's knight here. Notice that the bishop is preventing castling. Okay, we have a Pinsky. No problem. I, th I think a kick here is uh, quite appropriate. He can't retreat because of g5 here, and because of my advanced f pawn, I have f4, then trapping the bishop. So now he has to trade off his bishop or retreat that way. Okay, now, queen or pawn? I'm thinking queen. If my opponent had already committed to castling short, I might have gone for pawn just to open up the G file. But even then, so G8 is out of bounds because of this good bishop here. So we should now definitely be thinking about how to annoy that bishop out of existence. I don't have D5 immediately. I could play C6 with the idea of D5. I could think about a queenside fianchetto and long castles as well. But I'm thinking knight out first. Are we worried about this? Can't go there because of the pawn. I can't go there because of the bishop. If I go here, pawn just takes. So now that that dark squared bishop is off the board, I'm going to push. It looks like a of a waste of time, doesn't it? But the whole point is it's preventing queen h5 because now rook covers that square. See? Getting cleverer. Alright, now knight wants to come in here. Which suggests some... I like this c6 
d5 idea now. Particularly as c6 then takes that square away from the knight and takes that square away from the knight. The knight might come here anyway. Let's probably take the pawn. Can't go there because of the bishop. I might think about taking the pawn anyway. Bishop c5, threaten mate. It's a good square for the knight. Okay. Now, I think he wants to do this. So I'm, I'm going to play d5, I think. Yeah, the other thing about d5 is it opens up my LSB. So now I have two attackers on there. Back goes the bishop. Now I can simply win the pawn back with the bishop. That would make sense. It's developing, it's clearing the way for queenside castles. I also have bishop b4 with a pin on this knight, but I think I think this. I think this looks nice. Knight d7 castles, yes. Uh, knight a6. No, I think I think knight d7. Get castled. I've got two bishops, so I want to keep the board open. Yeah, there you go. So that's one good reason for bringing the knight out there, right? Now I've got two defenders on here. He's only got the one attacker right now. So I could bring out my bishop to here. But I kind of like this as well. It's still a pin. And if I take the knight, that's his pawns messed up. So what's he going to do? You can't move the knight, because I take the rook. You move the knight here, I take it. If you move the knight here, I take it. Both attack and the queen doesn't work. Okay. But now this. But if I play that, he has knight here. Does he not? d4, knight e4. Hits my queen. Can't go on the light squares, and I need to defend this guy. Hmm. Well, the pin's still there. The pin ain't going nowhere, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to get castled. Might put my rook on here, seeing as this pawn is just still not part of a chain. And he's broken the pin. Okay, I gave him time to break off the pin. This is a thought. We might trade queens. I capture towards the center, get a nice central pawn structure. Hmm. This, and he still goes there. I do have knight c5, I saw that. Hits the bishop and covers this square. This pawn is not under attack at all right now, so I think knight c5 looks like a, a decent move. g5, g4 also looks nice. Really pushing up on the king side. I mean, look, I've got all of the central pawn control, right? So I'm good for space. Therefore, I don't want to be trading. The g5 looks... Very, very good. Knight c5 looks good. I don't think I want to take out this bishop, because look, this bishop's got nothing. This bishop is just going to be pacing backwards and forwards. So I'm going back, I think, to knight g5 being the preferable move. Notice my queen is no longer attacked by the, sorry, defended by the pawn. Okay. Here. It's going to force queen takes queen, right? Because it is a skewer. More valuable piece in front, less a valuable piece behind, but both worth taking. So here, white takes, I take. He still has a bad bishop. White takes, I take, rook's going to move, probably to e1, I would imagine. Um, I mean, I have this, but no, but then there's two attackers on there, so, okay. This, queen takes queen, knight takes queen, rook moves. Yeah, my bishop is better.
He's yeah, he's got to. He's got to. Ah, oh, right, okay. So my bishop was better. Now my bishop a bit like his bishop is. Unhappy. Think just back here. Cover this square still. Could come all the way back here. I suppose that doesn't harm. This might have more future looking here rather than here. Yeah. Not touchable by either knight, so. Okay. If I kick that knight, you can't go there, 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 right? Or there now. Hang on. H4 forces the knight back. Have I achieved anything with that? This knight can't come there or there either. Look, it's space, isn't it? It's even more space. Can I push, takes, takes, that? Could be nice. That is also not bad, you know, targeting rook and pawn. Hmm. And that Russo line, by the way, that we're looking at, just um, thinking back to that first game that with Queen E7, that is 1800 to 2000 on Leeches. So certainly playable. It just needs a lot more um, prep, really. Got to do my homework on it. Might I even consider, let's say knight moves back, let's say g4? No, no, what if he pushes? I, I'm happy keeping this bishop locked up right now. This guy could come back and control these nice squares. And his knights are going to be on two light squares here. So I want to be controlling all the dark squares, which I do. There's one, two, three, all under my control with pawns. This is another one, but he's just chosen to move away from that square for some reason. Not entirely sure why, because where he's going from there, I've got no idea. And then anyway, I've played h4, so now what are you going to do? I think black's definitely a bit better here. Equal material. I do have the bishop pair. I do have the center. And I have got one of my opponent's pieces locked away in the box. For now. Question is, what do we do from here? We have an advantage. Well, look at your pieces. Right, who's doing the least work? This knight's not doing much at all. This rook could maybe come across to the semi-open, f-file. This knight might pivot round. Again, I don't want to take that bishop. That's a potential weakness. So let's say this knight retreats. Is there any idea of this? He might trade off. But getting a knight in there could be good. Well, I want to leave my opponent with the lack of space so that he's forced to do something he doesn't want to do. And why he's spending quite so long on this move, I have no idea at all, because there really is only one move here for white. There, I've got knight or rook takes, right? There, bishop takes. There, pawn takes. Can't go there because his own piece is on it, so he's got to go back there. So what are you thinking about? Or has your mum called you down for tea? So 
So I've been out for a walk already, already this morning. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get out for a walk quite early and actually watch the sun come up um, with the dogs, the five dogs. It used to be six. Um, me, it was cold. Jesus, it, it was probably just over zero, oh, just over freezing. And my hands have just warmed up now. They've gone pink again. So Rajan has done one. I don't know what he's doing. Don't know what he's doing. What I do know is I need to study that Queen E7. That uh, Russo line. Because with D3, I'm, I'm still quite happy with the um, Lucchini attack. If they take the pawn in the Russo, I'm very happy. I do very well in that, I think. Pull up chess.com explorer while, while we're here, while he's having a think and making up his mind. Or bolting his tea down as quick as he can. Okay, so... Go my games with black, yes. That'd be more instructive than master games. So, how are we doing? Okay, so here I play f5. With a 53% win rate overall. Most common move is e-takes. And I win 59%. Because this is inaccurate already, right? The next most common move is d3, after which I play generally bishop c5. That's the Lucchini. And 47 for 51 is, is reasonable, right? I do get some very quick wins with that. Um, the next most common move is knight c3, and that's just bad, because I think, we, yeah, we just take here. And the most common move, knight takes e4, loses a piece. Outright. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? And then d4. Now d4, I've got a 45% win rate against 53. So d4, I've only had 30, 87 of those. 87 out of 834. So about one in nine right now. But I would imagine that d4, if we come back up to here, right? You see, at um, 1800, 2000, it's played 15% of the time. Let's go 2200 and above. It's then the second most common move after d3. So there you go. Okay, it's disconnected. Boo. Boo hiss. Okay, so place your bets. What is the eval at this point in time? I would say black is at least one point better off. I would venture there was something like minus 1.9. But we've got a whole minute and five seconds to wait because it's a longer game. So the disconnection grace period is longer too. <sighs> so this afternoon I'm going out to referee an under 15 rugby match. Perfect conditions, although it's King freezing, blue skies, clear as a bell. It's going to be jolly cold. And then this evening, the missus is away, dog sitting for someone. So uh, I'll be here. I might make you a couple more videos. I don't know. We'll see. I've missed it. I hope you've missed me. No, seems like his. Uh, yeah, something took precedence. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Okay. So what do you reckon? I think minus 1.9. Write your answers down and we will check. No! No! Minus 0.4. I've got just the slightest lead. I thought it was more than the pawn. Depends what he does. Oh, it's saying knight e4. This is interesting. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't take because this bishop hangs. Also with check. Oh, whoa. No, I missed that. Missed that. Still not my sharpest, but still determined not to have the coffee or the sugar 
that would 100% act as a drug and wake me up, right? But I don't want to make these videos while well high right now. I may go back to it at some point in the future. But uh, no, I mean, so I mean, there's a few things in this. If you're if you're interested in following this journey, then go along to bigfat.substack.com and uh, sign up for our Substack for free. Uh, you could pay for it as well if you want, but um, get a bit more uh, content if you do. But there's there's some really good stuff on there. I'm making a daily diary. It's two or three minutes long video each time, explaining um, what's going on, my thoughts for the day. So. Yeah, you might enjoy that. Anyway, <sighs> um, we'll have a quick look at the game review while we're here. Did I stuff anything up? No, I did pretty good. Although here, I was much better. Let's have a look. Okay, he doesn't like this. But I liked it. Notice it took him 30 seconds to come up with this. Okay, good. Best, see. Sometimes kicking the invading piece is the right thing to do. Sometimes it is not the right thing to do. I can't always explain why. But here, like I said, part of it is he's not castled. If he takes, I get free development, right? That means I've got a queen out on the board, and he's gone from having two pieces developed to, to only one, which is good. If he retreats, he's lost tempo. Anyway, he took. It's good. Okay, it didn't like that. But I was really worried about Queen H5 check. You had a chance to play something better. Okay, but then what if Queen H5? I have to move the king, yes. Okay. I mean, C6... Definitely logical there. Now I play c6 and it likes it. Now the queen comes out. d5, great move. Okay, so we're doing fine here. Obviously. Or practically forced. Okay, taking the pawn with the bishop. With development. This is the key thing. You've got the option to get a piece off the back rank and do whatever it is you want to do. Because here I could have taken it with the queen as well. But maybe he doesn't trade queens. And maybe my bishop stays there in the king's way. We did not want that. Okay, knight d7, best move. Rookie one. That's okay. It says castles first. Now castles is best. And I'm it's here is minus 1.9. So I was minus 1.9. Okay, that's not great. And that's not great. D4. D4, you see, I was kind of stuck in this idea of not wanting to let this bishop play. But, but then I was concerned about this move. Then I have a check on queen h6. Oh, oh, well, that's nice. Because look, the queen cannot move anywhere to defend the knight. Oh, that's wicked. Because the knight's there. If that, if that knight wasn't there, right, then here the queen would have had e4. Huh. Anyway, that's not what happened. I played that. Still minus two. Hits the queen, forces the trade. Minus 1.9. <laughs> and that was over a pawn difference. It seemed arbitrary, didn't it, at the time? Hmm. Okay. And that's a miss. It should have gone in there. Oh, I guess. Because what I'm doing here is I'm actually pinning this pawn. 
And because the bishop's undefended, right? And in line with that bishop. So, with this pawn pinned, it's not defending this square. That gives my opponent this square. If I take, it takes, and he's got a great outpost square there for the knight, with this still pinned. Okay, I think I get it. I think I get it. Okay, and that's a miss. And that's okay, but bishop c5... Yeah, I looked at bishop c5. Just chose not to play it. Did we play that? Okay, h4 and, yeah, minus 1.2, it's saying here. Minus 1.2. So, you know, not a million miles away. All right, well done if you got minus 1.2. All right, we'll leave it there. Might see you later. Thanks for watching. See you soon.